African nationalism is a sickness that must be expunged by right-thinking melanin-dominant human beings. African nationalism is Christianity in disguise, which cools down our knowledge of the scramble for Africa. Here is what uh, Jeff Copper said. Colonialism has a bad reputation in the modern context, but colonial Africa was a far much better place for both black and white people before the colonists gave up. There is a debate in Zimbabwe whether Ian Smith or Robert Mugabe who was better. And what is happening in Zimbabwe is a microcosm of what we must think of in the whole of Africa. The brutal truth in answering this question about whether Mugabe or Smith was good is to know what happened in Zimbabwe, which offers a window on what is apparent when the majority of Africans forget the power of Christianity Islam and Judaism by losing their own identity. This is what has been happening in Zimbabwe since 1980 up to today. Our true Bantu identity teaches us that there never existed a country called Zimbabwe. It is a Berlin Conference territory which was crafted in Berlin in the absence of our ancestors and therefore any other border that came out of such arrangements should never at any minute be subscribed to our consciousness. The heroes of the first Chimurenga that was fought in Zimbabwe fought against colonialism, not against borders. They sensed that Christianity was behind all the forces that were taking over their resources and colonizing and putting laws all over the shore. What happens when we forget the power of Christianity is that its nefarious influence takes over and infects everyone. Here is a great example. Do you know that in the Second Chimurenga War that culminated in the liberation of Zimbabwe, so-called independence that came in 1980, was underpinned by a sincere but bloody oath and allegiance to the ancestors who perished in the First Chimurenga. The Second Chimurenga was inspired by traditional chiefs spirit mediums, and other patriots who rose against the imposition of colonial rule. In the second Chimurenga, you must know that not even one Christian church participated. Not even one mosque from the Muslims participated. No Jewish synagogue or no Jew or black Jew or Hebrew Israelite participated in the fight to free black people in the area that was called Rhodesia, later named Zimbabwe by the British. On one hand, almost all national leaders who participated in this war found a spirit that drove them because they had invoked almost all known spiritual guides and ancestors that had participated in the first war. They made vows and many other sacrifices. They even went on to wear regalia and fashion that mimicked our own traditional way. They responded to the ancestors' call and they went to a place called Dula in Matopos in Zimbabwe where they got a mandate to start the war to fight against the British. The second Chimurenga started. Mbiane Hunter had prophesied according to uh, this tweet that her bones will rise again and uh, many, many heroes came to participate in the war. At the instigation of Kenneth Kaunda, Julius Nyerere, and the, the so-called frontline leaders, the Chimurenga leaders were force merged to participate in the Lancaster House talks. That was a fatal mistake because the Lancaster House was a way to subvert the war. So they put their signatures. You can see Robert Mugabe, Joshua Nkomo, Abu Bishop Mzorewa, Dr. Esim Dawarara, they put their signatures to a constitution they never had a lot of input. Therefore, they surrendered the gift of ruling Southern Africa and allowing Southern Africa to blossom. They made a mistake. What was their mistake? They did not consult the ancestors whom they had consulted in the first place, but trusted their judgment, which never helped them to start the war. That was a mistake. What happened in Zimbabwe whether we accept it or deny it is a very insidious nature of Christianity on display, proving uh, that its methods are very powerful 
mental programs. There is an invisible influence or spirit within Christianity, Judaism, and Islam. And despite their history of debauchery, genocide, sinfulness, and evil, these religions continue relentlessly to influence all and sundry unless one radically deals with them. In the case of Zimbabweans and all melanin dominant human beings, the masses fail utterly. What happened in Zimbabwe since 1980 is that by assenting to the Lancaster House talks, they lost control of the liberation and disconnected their links to the ancestors that had helped them in the war. You do not negotiate with the devil, you crush him under your feet. The British now took over their manipulation at a very high level. They appointed one of their own, Lord Soames, who served as the president of the Royal Agricultural Society of England in 1973 and was a non-executive director of Nathan Meyer Rothschilds and the Sons Private Limited. You know, the Rothschilds control all wealth and all money. You deal with them at a spiritual level. It was not only that. The 1980 elections would uh, somehow be won by a man who never really fully participated at the brunt of the struggle. A Catholic archbishop would solemnize the whole activity. Remember, no Christian church participated in the liberation struggle. The archbishop was not supposed to be anywhere near. The nationalists were authorized to go to war at Dula Matopos. And uh, this is the man who knew what was supposed to be done. But Christianity and Christians infiltrated the struggle and Joshua Nkomo was left alone and exposed. The man on the left during a 1980 inauguration of the Jesuit, this man is a Jesuit, a Catholic, who hated African traditions to the core, just like any Jesuit would. This man was a Reverend Kenan Sodindo Banana who became the first president in independent Zimbabwe per British dates as per Lancaster House. He had gone to Wesley Theological Seminary in Washington, D.C. where he obtained his Master's of Theology Studies. In 1979, he went on to attain a bachelor's degree in theology from the University of South Africa. He would never remember anything about our traditional vows on independence. The mass euphoria that followed 1980 so-called independence would make the masses never remember Dula or the vows they had made and embraced Christianity. The celebrations would also be graced by a mulatto known as Bob Marley who never sang African traditional songs but, but promoted a Rastafarian religion which has nothing to do with our Bantu or Maati melanin religious Philosophy. In 1980, Christians come out of their caves with shocking pretense. Most Zimbabweans today are Christians. Statistics estimate that 74.8% identify themselves as Protestants, including Apostolic, Pentecostals, or Protestant denominations. 7.3% identify themselves as Roman Catholic, and 5.3% identify themselves as other denominations. And our ancestors have been thrown into the dustbin. There was a transitional government prior to 1980 which was known as uh, Zimbabwe Rhodesia which was led again by a Methodist bishop known as Bishop Abu Muzurewa who went to Central Methodist College Fayette and at Scarlet College in Nashville, Tennessee in the United States after some years as a teacher, as a lay preacher, as a youth organizer and as a pastor he became the bishop of the Methodist Church in Zimbabwe in 1968. He would go on to be pushed on to become the first black prime minister of Zimbabwe, Rhodesia, towards Zimbabwe. His president, the Zimbabwe Rhodesia president, was also an ordained elder of the Presbyterian Church of South Africa. His name was Josiah Zion Gumede. So, you can see that Christianity took over. One of the most brilliant leaders to ever emerge in Zimbabwe, the Reverend Dabaning Stole, who founded ZANU that later morphed up into ZANU-PF after the coup of Robert Mugabe instigated by Julius Nyerere and Kenneth Kaunda, renounced his Christianity and followed his African traditional belief system. 
his lieutenant, who was also a brilliant scholar, Herbert Chitepo, who was later assassinated, never embraced Christianity. We have no records that he was a Christian. Other than that, he was a man dedicated to the liberation of Zimbabweans. The first vice president, woman vice president in Zimbabwe, who fought gallantly during the liberation struggle and uh, survived many assassination attempts, would later convert to become a senior member of the Salvation Army, a Christian church in Zimbabwe. The current president, who is ruling at the moment after Robert Mugabe, says, I am a congregant of this church. I greet you all. We have come to this church which I grew up in. Most of you were not yet born in the 1940s. I attended this church before we migrated to Zambia, which was still called Northern Rhodesia. We went to Kafue Mission, which is also a Methodist institution, but I later left to join the liberation struggle. When I came back from war, I attended church services briefly while staying in Ten World, but I stopped again. So he is a member of a, an independent church called the Apostle in Zimbabwe. He would go on to say, God, which is Jesus, a European God, he repeatedly saved him from death. Not Mbuyanehanda. You can go and read this website. What about the opposition leader at the moment? Oh, well, he is an ordained Christian pastor of the Apostolic Faith Mission. He hates Zimbabwe and Zimbabwean traditions. Here is what he said about the Zimbabwe bed. He said that Zimbabwe bed is part of our problem. We must deal with institutional idolatry. So he calls it an idol, but he forgets that he worshiped Jesus, a European who is an idol, crucified on a cross, an idol, who died on Easter, an idol, idolatrous death. This is what happens to Africans when they forget the power of Christianity. They become Europeanized in thought and in deeds, in politics, in, in economics, and everything else. We find therefore that traditional efforts to repatriate the skull of Mbuyanehanda and the proper burial of all other heroes has no steam. Because Christianity was given a breathing space, there would be no effort by the current president Emerson Munangagwa who sees himself as a Christian and the opposition leader who sees everything that is African as nonsense. Because we do not remember the spiritual importance of these heroes, we are doomed as a nation, in quotation marks, as a people and as melanin-dominant human beings. We must start to work hard to wake up the majority of melanin-dominant human beings, Africans, so that they can never forget the power, the insidious power of Islam, Christianity, and Judaism, and that they must never lose their own identity of being a Bantu, Bantus, male and dominant human beings. Because what happened in Zimbabwe is that we will be doomed. For more information, if you want to participate in all these activities, send us an email on join at marifado.com. This is her manager to P. Priest Yarabai, L.M. Dumizulum Jakanja, Kunikem Skabanu, saying we are not Christians, we are not Jews, we are not Muslims. We are male and dominant human beings that follow pure and undoubted African traditional belief system, ancestor worship, divinity, reverence, and worshipping the unseen, no gender, not spirit, not being creator. Ameni. Tatenda, siabonga, enkos, asante sana, and dupe.